Happy Friday, church. It's so good to be with you again. I miss you all. And um, I hope you're jumping in and reading every day the section in Acts. And this week, we've been on a crazy ride with Acts. We've seen Paul's first mission trip happen. We've seen the Jerusalem Council go on where it was with such integrity. They had to make decisions in order to reach out to the Jews and to the Gentiles. And now in chapter 16, we see Paul's second missionary trip right on the heels of that important council. And my favorite verse is right at the beginning of this that jumped out at me. A disciple was there named Timothy. He was the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was being raised by a believer and an unbeliever and by a Jewish woman and a grandmother. If you turn to 2 Timothy 1.5, you'll see why this verse excites me because of the impact that two women had on his life, that he had integrity in the word and he had a passion for the word from an early age. In this chapter, we see that God opens doors. He opens doors um, for the gospel. He opens doors, he's been in, uh, the gospel has gone from, from Greek to Roman and now to Europe for the first time. And then God opened hearts. He opened the hearts to receive that gospel. He opened the hearts of women who were by the river. He opened the hearts of men in prison. And then God opened prison doors. Big doors got opened to set a prison guard free. Exciting stuff that goes on in this chapter because Paul knew as he sat in prison that night, he knew that in fact, the jailer was the one that was really in prison. Mark often reminds me, um, as we look out in the world that the things that might discourage us in this world, the truth of the matter is we are amongst prisoners, prisoners of war, people who need to be set free. It's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual war we're in and we need to be willing to share the gospel so that they may be freed. As we read Acts together, let's be encouraged to care. Let's be encouraged to move from that caring to act. Robertson McQuilkin in his book, The Great Omission says, in a world in which nine out of every 10 people are lost, three out of every four have never heard a way out, and one out of every two cannot hear, the church sleeps on. Could it be we think that there must be some other way? Or perhaps we really don't care that much. Ouch. That hurt my heart when I read that. So let's be West Highland Baptist Church, the church that cares. Let's be a church that acts. Let's be West Highland acts. Have a great weekend. Be encouraged.